see here is a lot of interagency cooperation between public safety, state DEP, federal EPA. Um, you know, we know we've got a situation here that's not in the public interest and it's got to be addressed and, and, you know, it's taken us a little bit of work to get here mm -hmm. to a resolution. But, you know, certainly from the city standpoint, I appreciate particularly the involvement of DEP and EPA in, in coming in to address this. And I know DEP has been here since day one. Right. Um, EPA has been here since maybe, what, a month or two after the fire. So um, can you just kind of give me a little idea sure. where, where we're at right sure. now and what we can expect? Because I think from our standpoint, one of my concerns is just trying to help the public understand what they're going to see going on here over the next couple months and, and, and to understand that this is the, the solution, not the problem. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, um, I'll just echo your comments. Yeah. I think it has been a great partnership between the city, Mass DEP, and EPA. I mean, we've worked with Captain Williams. He's been helping kind yeah, of. Yeah, that's right. We got to credit Captain yeah, Williams. Absolutely. He gave us a lot of, um, you know, intelligence, I guess, about yeah. the property that really helped speed things along. And then, of course, Mass DEP has done a great job maintaining the site, the secure, you know, keeping it secure, the piles right. covered. Obviously, we had a long winter. You know, yeah. people were indoors, but now it's springtime. Weather's getting nice, so people are going to be outdoors. And so our plan now is to mobilize to the site this week. Okay. Um, and then organize, segregate out the asbestos-containing material from the larger debris. Okay. And then load it on line trucks, and then transport it off-site to a licensed hazardous waste landfill. Okay. Um, we will be doing air monitoring during the operation to make sure that there isn't dust right. from the site leaving the site. Dust suppression, watering the yeah. piles to keep them wet. Is the dust the primary issue you're concerned with yeah. during cleanup? Because yeah. I noticed just over since the time of the fire, and I know Captain Williams has worked very close with you guys, but you know I've, I've seen the area be wet down before. I know the covering has had yeah. to be repaired a few times and redone a few right. times, and that's all in terms of, of just trying to keep it contained until we can Correct. get it removed. Correct. I mean we went. Along with Mass DEP, we collect samples to yeah. confirm what yeah. the, the material is. It's yeah. asbestos-containing material. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, we will be doing air monitoring. Um, we're doing outreach, too, to, for the same reason and concerns that you have about public awareness. We have fact sheets. We'll be going around to the neighborhood and okay. handing out the fact sheets yeah. uh, with our contact information if people have any questions. I uh, plan on doing probably a four-day work week, seven morning till five in the afternoon. Okay. Probably three, four month processes. Wow. If you think about so it, this is that big of a project. Yeah, it's 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 tedious. Yeah, you know, you you load in trucks. You can see we don't have a lot of real estate to work with no. here. And no. I think Tom Tom Hasopoulos will be our on site federal on scene coordinator, overseeing that work out awesome. here every day. So Tom, you're going to be the go to guy. All right. And then um, you know we continue to stay in contact with Mass DEP, and then if there is any need to do anything further after we're done. You know, we would remand the site back to Mass DEP, but I really think it's just predominantly an asbestos. Yeah, and so obviously you've, you've dealt with these before. This Absolutely, is, this, this is the first time a building ever burned down that no. had asbestos in it. We're yeah. dealing with the same situation in Rockland, right Mass now. The oh, fire with the big that fire that we just had over there that you guys yeah. assisted on. Yeah. yeah, I mean this is yeah. pretty typical. Um, you know, I've done it well, in New Bedford. Yeah. You know, not yeah. a fire, but building. You know, building they had yeah. to go. Yeah. yeah. So, Chief, what are the concerns for you? Uh, do you have ongoing concerns in terms of this operation, or if, you know? again, we've already spoken about yeah. the air monitoring. It's our main concern. Yeah. Okay. You know, making sure that the neighborhood is safe. Yeah. <clears throat> so they guaranteed us that that, that would be strongly yeah. looked at. So, so the air monitor is actually periodically testing the air to see how much yeah. asbestos it's, 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 particles might dust. be in the air. Right. Yeah. We're using <laughs> dust as a surrogate for asbestos. Okay. You'll see that workers out there wearing air cartridge respirators, but they're working right. directly with the material, and right. they're going to have little monitors on, on that, and then we'll yeah. correlate the results from that with the dust. Okay. And obviously the idea is no dust. Yep. Keep the dust down, no dust, no issues. Yeah. Actually, in this case, we will be monitoring for asbestos as well, Okay. initially. If there's anything becoming airborne, we stop, reassess, come up with a different plan. Okay. Yep. So, you may make adjustments as you yeah. go along based upon whatever findings right. you might have as the project right. is I mean, going it's a, on. It's a controlled transportation disposal of the debris. We're not going to go out there with you know, uh, excavators digging right, through and right. creating Throwing everything right. around. Yeah. Right. Okay. Which is why, again, it, it's tedious and slow, right. but it, it's safely managed that way. Safely. Yeah. And uh, actually, one of the first things that I'm going to do is we cover all the piles that are, that are cut okay. and open. Yeah. And we'll be working in sections. So essentially you take it one piece at a time. Right, right, right. right. 
So this isn't going to be something that anyone's going to notice like a dramatic overnight change. No, no, no. It's going to be kind of like chipping away at it right. as you go along yeah. over a period and of time. I'll, I'll be giving you reports okay. weekly, bi-weekly. Yeah as you like, you know, no, I'll be working with the fire we'll department. Right. I just know that once everyone starts, I mean, certainly this has been source of a, a lot of complaints from folks more around the aesthetics of it than right. necessarily the asbestos, but the fact that, you know, this is, I don't know how many, it was July of last year, right? right? So we're around nine months or somewhere around there, nine or 10 months since it happened. So certainly I think everyone's anxious to right. see it be cleaned up. I think what's important for folks to realize is that there's a right way to do this, correct? And to do it the right way has taken some time to put the to put the people and, and the funding in place to mm -hmm. be able to do it. Do you have a guess as to the price tag as to what About this project? Seven hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, it's not and cheap. that's being federally funded that's by EPA. That's being federally funded by EPA. Wow. <laughs> We've already secured the funding, yeah. and of course, we because it's an asbestos job, we had to get our concurrence from our headquarters office because right. we're not out there to do building. Yeah. Asbestos abatement. Right, exactly. You know, this is obviously associated with a fire and a release and potential yeah. release to the environment, and yeah. that's why we're doing the work. But yeah, and that took some time. Okay. And I know along the way, too, Chief, there's been some, you know, you've had like a barricade around it, too, that looked like it was there to control water runoff, also. Right. Yeah, that we, part of it, yeah. We will control the water from, okay. you know, from the runoff, yeah. from our activities. Okay, all right. So you may be wetting it down periodically, but you'll also be controlling yeah, we'll where that by, water goes exactly. afterwards. Yeah. Bales. We'll yep. be trapping whatever is coming off the site, yep. and then uh, whatever gets contaminated, we put it back into the, the piles you know, okay. and get rid of it. So nothing will be coming off site. Okay. Clear water, yes, but nothing yeah, else. Yeah, but nothing in right. terms of contamination. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what else are we not thinking about? So we, you're going to do some local outreach. But I guess my concern here, and certainly we can use the media's help, is that this is a busy intersection on a state yeah. road. There are a lot of people who drive through here every day who don't necessarily live in the immediate area and wouldn't necessarily know what was going when on. When we start loading out, yeah. I'll contact the fire department and the, the police department and try to come up with a traffic plan, see how many trucks we need to bring in, yeah. where we're going to stage them, yeah. how are we going to you know, pull them out of here, yeah. which routes they're going to take to go to the highway. Maybe be able to avoid peak or rush hours. Exactly, like, yeah. Exactly, yeah. How many we're going to have a day, the size of them, you yeah. know, which we're still trying to figure that out. Okay. So I guess from the broadcast standpoint, we've got both police and fire involved in the local aspects of the operation, both from the safety standpoint with the asbestos, but also impacts on traffic and, and safely getting the load transported out of the city. Right. Yeah, and um, as Kelsey pointed out, you know, we've got a fact sheet. It's got our contact information along. Okay. Um, you know, Tom's. It, so is there anyone within the city that, if there's any particular person that you'd want us to work with uh, moving forward? I mean, like I said, we've been working kind of in yeah, form no, with Captain I Williams. Captain Chief? Yeah. Captain works for you, no? Yeah, absolutely. Are you okay he's, with he's Captain kind Williams of, here being the point guy? He's yeah. ahead of this from <laughs> okay. the beginning. So yeah, I absolutely. He'd, he'd be our contact. Okay. Great. All right. And we've got Ward Councilor Jack Lally here too, who represents uh, this particular neighborhood. So certainly for you, this has been an ongoing concern for some time. I have I have gotten calls about it. I'm, I'm happy to see uh, happy to happy to see a resolution, you know, in place. Thank you guys. Take a little time with this. That sticky part of the seven hundred thousand dollars we had to <laughs> yeah. figure out because we don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else for not coming? Captain, anything you can think of no, that I we think, should be talking about? I think we're, uh, we're good as a team. We'll get the job done. Okay. And it'll just take a little while. People have to be patient with us. It'll yeah. Be, it'll be a nice, clean property when we're done. Yeah. I think that three to four months is probably an important part of the message, too, because I I was thinking in terms of weeks, not months. So that's... You know, it may be faster. Out. Yep. You know, it depends. We don't know what's down there. We don't know what's underneath the tarp. So this is going to be a certain amount of dealing with it as you, right. as you, as you come across if, it. Let's say if, you, if we find drums, we have to, to deal with them, you know, differently. We just yep. don't pick them up and put right. them somewhere. We have to test them, you know, segregate yep. them. Sure. We don't know what's underneath the So we don't necessarily know not just what the building was all constructed of. We don't necessarily everything that may have been in the building at the time of the fire. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah.